was kind of like, we can fix this. It's not fixing it, it's just dealing with, you know, the way she is. We found out about Layla's condition when we were, when I was 20 weeks pregnant. That was when they diagnosed her with fibula hemimelia. She only had three toes and she had quite, quite a good difference on her leg. Um, yeah, we could we could lengthen or we could um, amputate. I think so much of our decision had been made almost before we got there only because we'd done loads of research. I think a lot of people, when I look on different groups, there's a lot of anti-amputation. And I think, I think people think it's a really bad thing. What she does now, what she's capable of, to us, we've, just, we've made the right decision because she, yeah, I think she's off running. Anything, she nothing stops her. Looking at all the, at the way that they lengthened, um, the amount of time every four or five years that she would have to be in the cage on, around her leg um, to have it lengthen. I thought, well, how is it going to affect their life? Yeah, I did read a lot of stories of kids that had been um, lengthened and then got to the age of 10 and decided to have an amputation because it, it wasn't comfortable and they, they weren't in it was, it, it was painful for them. I think we were not ever against the amputation. We always thought that was going to give her the best lifestyle that she could have. My only struggle with after we decided was the length of time between deciding and then booking the operation. I wish she had actually got the amputation a bit younger because she was almost 18 months old when she had it. So I think the worst part, the actual day of the amputation, is watching her cry and yeah, break down like that, and then just like melt away in your hands. Because it is, like, it's awful. I don't know, maybe it's because the day, once the day goes by, it's, it's like just dead fast. Um, but it didn't seem like the longest three and a half hours of my life, to be honest. I was quite, was I think bit... because we were really confident with the surgeon, like we'd had so many conversations with him and he was one of those doctors that made you really feel at ease. I knew that she'd be fine. We stayed in kind of the, the ward for six days with her. She was stuck in a bed for two days because of a drip, so she couldn't. Yeah, she had the drip, the morphine drip. I think by the end she just wanted out. She was just like a cage animal, just trying to get out, but she couldn't. So as soon as they came off, she was crawling. After two days, she was off around the hospital. And then once the, all the bandages are up, were off, yeah, she. it took her a, a couple of weeks to get used to looking at her leg without getting upset about it. Now she's just, she's like, where's my leg? She puts it on herself, puts her socks on. Yeah, she asks for it in the morning now. She doesn't when, put it on right most of the time, but... No, it goes on backwards, but... As soon as you find out um, if, if your child has fibula hemimelia or any other lower limb disability, to, to get in contact with STEPS. They've got loads of people that you can reach out to. The first time I ever rang STEPS, I think I was on, on the phone for about an hour and a half. <laughs> and um, silly questions that you don't really think you need to know or you don't know who else to ask. So speaking to other parents that have gone through it, that are part of STEPS, really gives you a bit of an insight. It's just really helpful to be able to go to somebody um, because the doctors aren't at the end of the phone for you. It's nice to have a contact um, that you can ring up, text, whatever, email, um, and 
and they're there at the end of the phone 